USDfootball.com. I'm Jack Smith alongside Connor Morissette for instant analysis from USC's Tuesday evening practice of San Jose State Week. Connor, the first game week of the season. We got to watch practice, talk with Lincoln Riley and Alex Grinch, and I think the biggest takeaway is defensive lineman Solomon Tuli-Alapupu is out for the season as confirmed by Lincoln Riley, who was asked about, and he said he underwent a lower leg procedure and he will miss the season. What was your biggest takeaway from the notes about Solomon? Really unfortunate news, a guy who played a little bit last year, but before that didn't get on the field for USC in four years. So a guy who's battled serious injuries. So my first thought, just feel bad for Solo, a guy who at USC Media Day was so excited about this season, and he was going to play a role on the defensive line, the defensive end spot. He had a real opportunity to compete for time. and. For some of spring ball and, and some of camp before he got hurt, he, he was competing and he was getting out there and he was going to play a role. So really unfortunate. Coach Riley did talk about how hopefully he'll get a seventh year and be back next season because he's dealt with so many injuries. So that's encouraging. Of course, that'll be his final decision. If he wants to do it, he can come back. Uh, but just how that affects USC's personnel. We've seen a lot more of Solomon Bird at that defensive end spot. Anthony Lucas has been switching around between defensive end and rush end. So just a body who USC was relying on that's not going to be there. It's unfortunate but some other guys will have to step up. Uh, and it just feels extra unfortunate. It keeps happening to the same guy, but Lincoln was asked, you know, is, is Solo disappointed about, you know, how many times it's happened to him and how it's him again? But he said, you know, you don't want to use the word disappointed because he's, he's excited and he's motivated to potentially come back. So it seems like he's handling it well, and, and you're right. Just, you know, our thoughts go out. It is tough seeing it happen to the same guy over and over again. Other than that, I don't think there were any, like, huge pieces of news that really that stick out. But we did get to watch, you know, an entire warm-up period of practice, got to talk to both Lincoln Riley and Alex Grinch as well as a host of other defensive players. What were some of your biggest takeaways from practice? Yeah, so in terms of what I saw from today, we saw the scout team on offense going up against the defense, and I don't know how much they showed us in terms of what they showed today. Is that actually going to be how they line up? But Tackett Curtis was with the first team defense, which is something we've seen a little bit, and some of the linebackers were back today. So a positive sign for Tackett Curtis. And afterwards, Alex Grinch said he really couldn't have done much more in the offseason. He was here in the spring. He's here in the fall. The effort is all there. We've heard so much about his motor, his effort. I wouldn't be surprised if he started against San Jose State based on what we saw today even though the linebackers are back. The second team linebackers, Eric Gentry and Rajon Davis. Could USC elect to go with one of those guys alongside Mason Cobb, who's certainly going to start after being named a captain and another guy who's done everything right? That is possible, but it looks like Tacky Curtis has done everything right to be in a position to start. That was probably my biggest takeaway, a guy who's really impressed everyone all uh, spring and all fall. And we also got to hear a little bit about the, or at least see a little bit about the defensive backs. Uh, what were some of your biggest takeaways about the way they lined up? On Trojans Live last night, Lincoln Riley said Sierra Wright been the most improved USC player, or one of them, and he mentioned him first when it comes to the cornerback. So I think when you look at that cornerback depth chart, Sierra Wright, he's the first name on the list. And then Damani Jackson, it looks like he's starting to separate himself from Jacoby Covington a little bit. I think Jacoby Covington will still play, especially against San Jose State if USC jumps out to a big lead. But Damani Jackson and Sierra Wright, I think those are your two starting corners. We saw Jalen Smith with the ones in terms of the nickel position. Christian Roland Wallace, there was some debate. Would he start? Would it be Jalen Smith? Looks like Jalen Smith, again, that could change, but just based on what we saw today, it was Jalen Smith. And then Kalen Bullock, of course, in the secondary. Max Williams started with him um, today, and I expect Williams or maybe Bryson Shaw will be that other safety, but Kalen Bullock, of course, will start. It looks like it's going to be a little bit of a revolving door, but Kalen Bullock will be a fixture, Damani Jackson will be a fixture, and Sierra Wright will also be a fixture. And we also got to see Zion Branch working with the twos on defense at the other safety position outside of, of, of Kalen Bullock. So there's definitely, you know, seeing the way that this is shape, shaking out, and I think you mentioned it, we're not really sure whether this is for real or whether it's just the first period of practice. So, you know, take everything we're saying with a grain of salt so far. We, we really won't know until maybe not even the San Jose State game, maybe just a couple weeks into the season, who the real starters are with some of the injuries and, and with some of the newer faces that are on the defense. On another note, we were watching the kick returners and Marshawn Lloyd for the first time. We saw working with the kick returners, so that's just another person they're adding into this long list of guys that have been taking punts and kicks. It seems like a trial run before the season. I don't know if you have any thoughts on that, but we did see Marshawn Lloyd joining that group that's made up of a lot of the other receivers and running backs. There were some injuries, so I wonder if maybe a guy missed played into Lloyd jumping into that kick return spot. I don't imagine we'll see him too much returning kicks. It was new. It was something we hadn't seen before, but never say never. We'll see how they line up against San Jose State. Raleek Brown's been a fixture back there. He was there again today. We saw Quentin Joyner again today. So a lot of familiar faces. What was really interesting, Jack, was we all remember the two-lane game, that kickoff, or was it Mario Williams who caught it and, and stepped out of bounds? Today, Kyle McDonald, who's been working with the returners all fall camp, 
he had the machine kick the ball to the corner of uh, the front corner of the end zone along the sideline to try to replicate that situation. So I think all fans will be excited to hear that they're working on a situation they messed up last season. Some mixed results. A couple guys, Dorian Singer, I think, had a ball drop. Kyle McDonald said, hey, we don't want to see that. Malik Brown, a couple muffs. But I think overall it's encouraging that they're working on a situation where they didn't have some success a year ago. Well, I think the fans will be excited to hear the band as well. It's just the, the different signs that we're getting closer to the start of the college football season. You know, the band is here. Students are on campus for the first time, the, you know, media watching practice. And also the first real talk about San Jose State started. Uh, Shevin Cordero, the quarterback, was kind of a main fixture today when talking about Lincoln Riley and Alex Grinch, some of the other defenders, especially his legs. He ran for nine touchdowns last year. And as we know, USC struggled with running quarterbacks at times. So a couple other players were asked about that. What was your main takeaway from what they saw from Cordero's legs? Yeah. Yeah, when you ask the general question, what have you seen from San Jose State on film, and we talked to the defensive players today and the defensive staff in addition to Lincoln Riley, or I guess not the whole staff, just Grinch, but it was defense today. So asking those guys what they saw, Cordero was the first thing they would mention. The quarterback is fast, the quarterback can move, and they said we got to do a good job of containing him. No one really brought up that they struggled against running quarterbacks a year ago, but I just thought it was interesting. That was the main takeaway, the main focus from this team on film. Cordero can move, and he also doesn't turn the ball over very much. I think he only had six picks. San Jose State as a team didn't turn the ball over a lot. We all know USC, they, they forced a ton of turnovers a year ago. So I was talking to Ryan on the podcast today. He's really interested. He doesn't care about turnovers. He just wants to see stops. And the fact that Cordero can run, that adds an extra layer, something you got to worry about. I think you can learn a little bit of something uh, if you're USC in this game, even though the spread's so big and USC's a heavy favorite. Cordero is a good quarterback. He can move. I think he'll be the best quarterback they face in those first four weeks. If you can slow his legs down, I think that's an encouraging sign, even though, of course, it is San Jose State, an opponent you should be comfortably. Yeah, the preseason Mountain West Offensive Player of the Year, and he had to run a lot last year. The offensive line wasn't good. They allowed 48 sacks on the season, which was the 12th most out of any FBS school. So he definitely had to run, and they, they returned five starters on the offensive line. So really, we won't really know until the first game whether the offensive line is improved or not, but definitely a place that struggled last year. So look for the USC defensive line to try and take advantage. I thought it was interesting that he doesn't turn the ball over. It took him 170 passes to throw his first interception last wow. year, and he's like right up there on that leaderboard with Caleb Williams, who was, you know, a similar number, took him a lot of passing attempts to throw his first interception. So I think the, the point you make about stops is certainly going to be something that we see because it sure doesn't look like Cordero is going to pass the ball or, or turn the ball over a lot. I asked Mason Cobb about facing a running quarterback and how he feels like the defense is prepared to handle the quarterback with legs. And he kind of just point blank said, you know, we go against Caleb Williams in practice, so we're going to be just fine. Yeah, and shout out to Mason Cobb for getting the captain spot. One of the new guys, of course, as a transfer, but also one of the new captains with um, a few other USC players, so really excited for Mason Cobb. And he just seems like a guy who's fit in perfectly. He, he takes every linebacker rep first. He, he's a leader. And I, I think the staff, they in terms of the transfers they've added, he's at the top of the list in terms of guys who are going to have the biggest impact. His anticipation is what stuck out. Alex Grinch was asked about him, and he mentioned that. So I, I just think that's been a perfect fit, and I expect him to be one of the stars inside the Coliseum on Saturday. I asked him what it meant to, to be named a captain in his first season here, and he just basically went to the trust, you know, the trust that the players have in him, even as the new guy to you know bestow the captain honor on him. He said it meant a lot, and he said that when he got on campus, you know, it wasn't a focus of his, but he's always been a leader, and he's learned from guys at Oklahoma State that he feels like he was in a position where he could step up and, and be a vocal leader, and I think that everyone kind of saw it coming all camp, that Cobb, like Shane Lee last year, was going to be named in one of the captain's spots. Yeah, huge, and I think his mentorship of Taka Curtis. We got to talk about that a little bit. Taka Curtis, he gets so much credit for, for doing such a good job. I think he's learning from Cobb. I think he, Cobb's taking him under his wing as a guy who just shows that same level of effort, and I think it's rubbed off on Curtis, which is, is really impressive. The fact that USC is able to add two impact linebackers from a core that struggled a year ago, that's major. And these two guys could start. We, we've talked so much about Taka Curtis starting, potentially. The fact that you have not just one guy who was always the plan with him was to start, but now Taka Curtis is coming on, and he might start against San Jose State as well. I don't think USC bargained for two new starting linebackers, and that's what they've got. So that's a good problem to have. Well, you've got two captains in the linebacker room right in the middle of the defense. You've got Eric Gentry, who by all you know, vocal accounts could be a captain. Maybe if he wasn't injured last year, he, he's right up there as well. You know, every play in the year of the rest of the defense. And you've got Taka Curtis, who everyone thinks is a, that up-and-coming player at the linebacker room. So certainly a place that USC's got a lot of options for right now, and we'll see the way it shakes out against San Jose State. Do you have any more notes you want to add before we wrap this one up as we really inch our way towards the first college football Saturday of the year? 
Yeah, it's something we've talked about all spring and fall camp. The defense, they finally get a chance to erase what happened last season. And of course, that'll never be erased, but they get a chance to, to write a new story, if you will. They are so tired of last year and Utah and Tulane and not performing well in the fourth quarter. They're so sick of everyone talking about that. So I think they're really motivated to come out against the San Jose State team and not only play the first three quarters really well, but the fourth quarter is going to be a big emphasis. Even if it's guys who maybe we aren't expecting to play a ton of minutes during the season, the whole mantra of USC, I'm going to butcher it, Jack. What was it? Uh, no matter how long it goes, the better we get. I think that the longer, was, was it. The longer yeah. it goes, the better we yeah, get. There, there we go. I, I needed a guy like you to correct me on that, a guy who knows what he's talking about. Um, that's been a huge focus, and I think we're going to see it on Saturday, even if it is some backup players. The whole camp, everything that Lincoln Rally is, is pushing, that the, the culture, everything comes down to that. they got to finish strong. Well, San Jose State in the Coliseum on Saturday. We've got another practice we get to go to tomorrow. Chris and I will have instant after that one. We'll get a chance to talk with some other assistant coaches as well as what we assume to be offensive players and you know, skill position guys, offensive linemen, hopefully Caleb Williams before the first week game. And then we get closer to the first college football Saturday of the year. And to kind of finish with echoing the words of Mason Cobb, I asked him if you, get to, if you had to give a message to the fans, you know, even as the new guy that were in between whether to come on Saturday or not, you know, what would you, t what would you say to them? And he said, if you want to see history you have to be out there otherwise you're going to miss it so i might have butchered that quote a little bit but the main gist is is get to the coliseum on saturday mason cobb and the rest of these defensive players were really excited about the first game we'll have a chance to talk more with the offensive players tomorrow but that'll kind of wrap up instant analysis here from tuesday practice as uh, you know you've been talking about it just ready to see the team play yep so for Connor Morissette, I'm Jack Smith. Make sure you check out uscfootball.com. 50% sale on the site right now. Sign up for a membership. There's so much content. We didn't even mention the fact USC got the number one recruit of the 2026 class today. They hired an athletic director yesterday, and no one's covering it better than uscfootball.com. So make sure you go sign up for a membership, and we'll see you tomorrow.